Hello and welcome to the show. Today we are going to be discussing the topic of variation and selection. Types of variation. Continuous variation is influenced by both genes and the environment, resulting in a range of phenotypes between two extremes, for example, height in humans. Discontinuous variation is caused by genes alone and results in a limited number of distinct phenotypes with no intermediates. For example, A, B, O and A, B blood groups in humans. Mutation is another form of variation. Mutation. The definition of mutation is a change in a gene or chromosome. Ionizing radiation increases the rate of mutation as it causes unwanted reactions to occur in DNA, changing genes. In some cases, this could result in uncontrolled cell division, leading to the formation of a tumour. These cells are cancer cells. Ionizing radiation can also kill cells. If the testes or ovaries are exposed to ionizing radiation, this may result in sterility or the genes in a sex gamete may change, resulting in the possibility of a faulty gene being passed on to a child. It should be noted that mutations happen all the time in people, but in most cases your body can fix the faulty genes before any serious consequences arise. Artificial selection. Now we will discuss the role of artificial selection in the production of varieties of animals and plants with increased economic importance. There are certain characteristics in plants or animals that are more desirable, such as friendliness when it comes to pets, or higher milk yield when it comes to cows. Animals with these characteristics are more useful and hence hold increased economic importance. Artificial selection is used to increase the number of animals with these desirable characteristics to help boost the economy. For example, take cows. Farmers tend to prefer cows that are more docile and have a higher yield. Therefore, if two cows that exhibit these characteristics are crossed, it is more likely that their offspring will show these characteristics too. This is called artificial selection. We are selecting which characteristics will be passed on to the next generation, not leaving it to nature. After several generations, these characteristics will become more prominent. I'll give you some examples of desirable characteristics in different species of plants and animals to help you out. Cows, docility and high milk yield. Pets, friendly and loyal. Guard dogs. Fierce, alert, obedient and loyal. Guide dogs. Intelligent, alert and obedient. Cattle. Docile. Crops. High yield, insect and pesticide resistant and a high growth rate. Variation. In biology, the definition of variation is the difference between individuals within a species. It is a term used at almost every level to describe genetic variation, cellular variation, variation in organisms as a whole, etc. Variation arises due to differences in genotype and environment. For example, a plant with the genotype capital T, lowercase t, would be tall but a plant with genotype lowercase t, lowercase t, would be a dwarf. These two plants show both genotypic and phenotypic variation. In another case, both plants may have the genotype capital T, capital T, and so both are tall. However, one plant grows in better environmental conditions than the other, so one plant is taller. This is phenotypic variation caused by differences in the environment. Organisms that arise from sexual reproduction will show much more variation than organisms that arise from asexual reproduction. This is because the random fusion of sex gametes allow offspring with different combinations of alleles to be born. 
In asexual reproduction, however, offspring are genetically identical to parents, so the only variation present is caused by mutation, and in some cases, the environment. It should be noted that most organisms overproduce. They produce more young than necessary to maintain the size of their population. There are, however, a limited number of resources – food, light, space, etc. – so the excess number of young leads to competition. This is the struggle for existence. Competition leads to differential survival of, and reproduction of, those organisms best fitted to the environment. The better adapted organisms, the ones that are more fit, will survive to adulthood and the rest die. This process is called survival of the fittest. This means that only the genes carried by the fittest organisms are passed on to the next generation and the genes of the weaker organisms slowly die out of the gene pool. Natural selection. This is defined as the process by which organisms that are better adapted to their environment have a greater chance of surviving and passing on their genes. It was first theorised by Charles Darwin. The theory of natural selection suggests that the best adapted organisms survive to pass on their genes to the next generation and that the poorly adapted organisms die out so their genes are eventually eradicated from the population. This means that over time, the population will grow to be better adapted to the environment. If the species survives long enough, it is even possible that it will eventually change into a completely new species. This gradual change in the species over time through natural selection in response to changes in the environment is a possible mechanism of natural selection. Bacteria adaptation As a good example of natural selection, there can sometimes be the development of strains of bacteria that are resistant to antibiotics. Due to mutation, one or two bacteria in a population of bacteria may have developed genes that grant them immunity against certain antibiotics, or sometimes against multiple antibiotics. Therefore, if an antibiotic they are resistant to is used to wipe out their population, these resistant bacteria will survive and will be able to reproduce asexually to pass on their genes to the next generation. Bacteria multiply very quickly, so entire colonies of antibiotic-resistant bacteria can form in a couple of hours. This is why it is important to always complete the antibiotic course that you're on, whether you feel better before it's over or not. Completing the course will ensure the death of all the bacteria, reducing the chance that some will survive and mutate to gain the resistance gene. Mutations in bacteria usually occur during reproduction. It is also a good idea to take a combination of antibiotics instead of relying on just one, in case you have bacteria that are resistant to one of them. However, you should never take antibiotics without consulting a doctor first. Medicines are, after all, drugs, and if not administered properly, can be seriously harmful. That is the end of the topic. Thank you for listening. We hope that you found it informative. Next, we will be discussing the topic of energy flow in ecosystems. Please remember to like, share, comment and subscribe for more. Until next time, take care.